Hello everyone. So this is Bun, the latest and greatest thing in the JavaScript world, a all new JavaScript runtime. If you don't know what a JavaScript runtime is, it is basically an environment that enables a programming language to execute. Like we have Java runtime and environment, GRE. Similarly, we have JavaScript runtime environments. The most common one that you use every day is browser. So your browser runs JavaScript. It's also a runtime. Then there's Node.js, which enables us to write servers in JavaScript. So that's Node.js. And similarly, we have a new runtime environment, Bun. There's also another thing called Deno, but it kind of, it came and then it didn't do anything. It's, it's whatever. So Bun is said to be blazingly fast. And today we're going to be seeing just how blazingly fast it is. Okay. This, how fast is this blazingly fast? So this is the official website and they say that these are the benchmarks against Node and Deno uh, with, you know, server side rent and react, loading a huge table and hashing. So whatever. So these are the, uh, some benchmarks. I wanted to run my own benchmarks and benchmark bun with Node.js and also C++ because which channel are you on? Just look at the channel name. Okay. So we're going to be doing a reality check, like how blazing fast is fast. Okay. How fast is blazingly fast? Anyhow, so that's what I am going to be doing. And uh, let's have a look at the results. I have plotted them. So this is the result for a simple web server. Okay. So I, I created a simple web server in bun, C++ and Node.js. Okay. And then I saw that how many requests can it serve in one second. Okay. So this is the chart. So as you can see, Node.js is at the bottom. Then we have bun and then we have C++. And the difference between them doesn't really seem that much at first glance. But if you like have a little bit closer look and uh, let's see th this point. Okay. So let's see this point. So Node.js does about 300,000 requests. Uh, Bun does 350,000 requests or processes them, serves them. And C++ does 375, which is quite a lot. So this is th the difference. Now, this difference is obviously not that much in the grand scheme of things, right? It's only about one sixth or one seventh of the total serve requests that are being served. So that's pretty good. So Bun has done quite well here. Now, this was a small workload and uh, so I wanted to see like what will happen when the workload is larger. But before that, I also want to show that uh, this Node.js server that I had written, I had written in HTTP. So if I open this, that's how I have written the server. Before this, I actually used Express. So it's a framework for writing web servers. And when I use that, then just look at these results. Oops. It's, it's not visible. So, yeah. Uh, sorry. So, as you can see, that uh, Node uh, Express is quite quite slow, and I think it is to, you know, it is because there there are a lot of things that are happening in Express. It's a quite a framework while it's lightweight it's still somewhat bulky so it's pretty slow compared so to keep things fair i switched to http and as you can see i got a pretty fair result and it kind of matches these benchmarks in my opinion now i didn't test with deno but whatever but yeah c++ is fast but not that fast right i mean it's pretty fast but not surprisingly fast and uh, the crow is also like a framework so crow is like express of c++ so that says a lot now but this was for small workloads now i wanted to see like how things will change in large workloads and this is what happens in large workloads so node.js is still like 
very low and it is with HTTP and in node uh, sorry bun and uh, C++ I saw an interesting result that initially they were like pretty similar so this large workload is actually 50 times uh, what uh, the sm smaller workload was so initially they were like same more or less and then as the time was increased C++ really uh, kept its momentum meanwhile bun slowed down so i think this is because of uh, all the f so according to me okay this is obviously not a actually uh, analyzed thing but in, i think it is happening because uh, bun so in bun i'm using hono I, I will show the code in a second but whatever framework i'm using in bun it's pretty lightweight. Meanwhile, in C++, it is a little bit heavyweight. So initially, it kind of matters. But as the processing power required to process a request becomes the bigger uh, bottleneck, it overpowers the effect of all those uh, framework things that C++ Crow does. And so they kind of stop mattering. Meanwhile, Bun is just not able to keep up. So this is the thing. So these were the results, if you were interested. Now I, I'll be sharing like how I actually got these results and why you should take them with a huge grain of salt, right? Uh, so yeah, let's uh, start. So in Node.js, first of all, I tried with an Express server, a very basic Express server, uh, but then I discarded that. So I create an HTTP server and whenever I get a request, I so this is the heavy workload where I iterate 5,000 times and add a random number between 0 to 100 to our result and then I send a result JSON. So this is what uh, our Node.js is doing. And in the smaller workload count was just 100. I did the same with bun. So in bun, I had to use Hono because Express is not supported. I wanted to use Express in both to kind of, you know, Keep it uh, fair, but then Express was not supported, so I had to use Hono. So, but then again, I switched to HTTP, so I don't think it's a big deal. If anything, I think Node.js has the advantage here in terms of frameworkiness. So, here also on the main request, I iterate 5000 times and then just do the same thing basically. And I've done the same thing with C++ Crow. If you don't understand this code, that is fine. I made a video how on how to create a REST API in C++. You can check that out. It will be linked in the description and should come as a card right about now. So I created a route and it is also doing the same thing. Just a random function is slightly different. So there I'm doing a multiplication, right? After a ran getting a random number, I'm doing a multiplication. Here, I'm doing a modulus. So if anything, I believe uh, C++ should have the disadvantage here. Although I don't think it is any worthwhile disadvantage. That's why I'm ignoring it. And then just send the JSON result. And uh, yeah, that's what I've done. I, di I didn't create a new project for this because obviously I will have to set up CMake and set up the dependency. I wasn't going to do all that. I just picked up my old code and uh, reiterated that. So that's what I did. And as for how I got those benchmark results, for example, if I run bun start, right, what I did is let's just check that it is working. So it is working, right? I used WRK command or utility with eight threads, 500 concurrent requests, and whatever the duration is. So I tried one, two, four, eight, and 16. And then the URL, for example, let's just do one second. And if I run it, as you can see, I got 35,000, which should be pretty much the same as what it is here. So yeah, that's what I did. Hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe. And if you want me to do some more comparisons, like. Maybe I can do comparison with Go and Rust as well. 
you know, throw them in the mix to see how everything performs. We can do that. So leave a comment if you want to watch that. And just bef but before ending the video, I just want to mention that this is a very simple, very simple benchmark. And a web server usually have asynchronous operations, right? It is usually not bottlenecked by the operations, right? The CPU operations like plus minus, but it is bottlenecked by our uh, asynchronous operations like fetching some data, right? But obviously, if we just assume it is the same everywhere, right, then the actual co computation comes down to all the actual computation, right? All the plus minus data handling, data passing, all that. So naturally, C++ has an advantage there. But Bun, Bun has done surprisingly well. And like I, and just like I wanted to say, Benchmarking is not as simple as what I've done here. There are many other type of benchmarks that we can do and results may be surprising according to that. So take this with a grain of salt only. But yeah, this was pretty interesting. Hope you liked this video. Again, if you did, leave a like, subscribe and the code for this video will be in the description. So with that, I'll see you next time.